Joining us now, she's the head coach at Oregon State, of course, the most decorated USA softball player of all time. She's done it all, gold medalist, Olympian. I mean, she's done. we could go on and on in the resume, but that would take up most of the podcast. <laughs> I speak of our good friend, Laura Berg, joining us here on In the Circle. How you doing? I'm fantastic. Fantastic. Enjoying the new year so far. I know. I always enjoy our annual get-together. Uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm always curious what you had so many injuries and things last year that did not go your way. When you reflect on last year, this off season, as you prepared for this team and this year, what, what pops in your head from last year? You know, the biggest thing is, is, is learning, you know, taking something away. Injuries are part of athletics. Uh, unfortunately it does happen. And what can you learn from it? What can you pull from it? So a couple of the kids that were injured, we were fortunate enough to be able to have it in our budget to travel with them. And so, you know, I could talk to them, Hey, what'd you learn? What are you taking away from, from watching? Cause you can learn a lot from watching um, your decision-making. What would you have decided to do? Where would you be at in this situation? Um, what would you do in this, this key hitting situation? Uh, different things like that. And so instead of wallowing and, you know, being upset about not being able to play, not having my starters from, you know, six starters from the College World Series experience, uh, you know, we can learn something from it. And so uh, that's what I really challenged the injured kids with. You look at obviously, first, let's start with your staff. You got some new faces. You got an old, a, a familiar face that's back. Uh, just talk about <laughs> your new faces on the staff and, and what led to for uh, bringing them in. Yeah, uh, Matt Lyle uh, is our hitting coach, infield coach. Um, I have been friends with him for a very long time uh, since he was at uh, the University of Oregon. And we have talked about, you know, working together whenever the opportunity uh, uh, came about. And it did, um, you know, Eric Leba left to go to Texas A&M and I'm super happy for him. Um, enjoyed every second I got to work with him. He was such a joy, such knowledge uh and uh his experience of men's fast pitch um was pretty awesome to work with um so I, I was sad when he left but i'm really excited to be working with matt lyle um the connections uh the knowledge that he brings uh with his experiences of not just working with softball but with baseball as well i'm really excited to see what he can do here you know obviously everywhere he has gone that program has benefited um offensively uh, having him a part of it. And so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, Marcy Green is back for the year. She's our interim pitching coach. Um, uh, I'm glad she's back. She's somebody obviously knows pitching, which is kind of where our game starts. Um, you know, she she works really well with the pitchers and they respect her and they they soak up the knowledge that she has and the experiences that she has had playing and coaching as well. Uh, so Glad she's back for the year. And then uh, Dominic Garcia, uh, he, his sister played here, Jessica, she was an outfielder. Um, he has a lot of knowledge and has been around the sport uh, following his sister around. And uh, he is working uh, with our catchers and he's been our manager um, to video uh, guide, uh, now one of our assistant coaches. What's it like, first of all, having an expanded staff? uh with three assistants now full-time uh being around all the time at least uh how has that a, a made your coaching you know i would assume you have a little more time to manage different things that maybe you didn't before yeah i can delegate a little bit more um and 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 give them more uh free range to be able to take you know for dom to take the catchers off uh, on his own and be able to work with them instead of you know the one of the other two assistants or myself having to pull them aside and uh, put them through some drills, which takes me away from the outfielders, or it takes away, you know, our infield or pitching coach away from, you know, the people that they're working with, the players they're working with. And so it really, really helps out, you know, uh, with the coaches, but it also um, is a benefit for the players. You know, the more eyes, uh, the better. So yeah, I'm re really excited that that got passed. For the new staff, how much of them do they want to know about the players on the roster and you fill them in fill them in on that and how much of that have they wanted to learn on their own on with their own eyes in the fall oh they they have free range you know they, uh if they yeah they 
are going to ask. They all have a, a take and, and um, can throw in their two cents when it comes to recruiting and going out and watching kids and being able to bring them in on campus for an official visit. They're all, every, everybody's a part of that. And so, and gets to throw in their, their knowledge, uh, what they see, what they think that this player will be able to contribute to our program, um, you know, out on the recruiting trail and also in visits. Talking about some of the roster here, what, what has stood out to you the fall as far as the returners? What have you noticed from them? Have you noticed that extra, uh, 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 maybe a little chip on the shoulder saying, you know, uh, from, you know, the, uh, motivation? What, what have you seen from your returners? Absolutely. Uh, especially those that, ones that, that were injured. You know, they have a chip on their shoulder. They want to show that the the culture that they helped develop when they were freshmen um, is still the same culture and that we, we can still win. We can still get back to the College World Series. Um, they, they are excited. They are chomping at the bit. They want to get back out onto the field. They've had to sit out for a year which is really hard to do. It's a long season anyways. And then uh, when you can't play and be a part of that, uh, makes it even longer. And so they're just, they're, they're chomping at the bit. Who are your leaders? Have you have established leaders right now from a player standpoint? Is that still evolving? Um, so far from, you know, watching from the fall, from experience, from uh, their leadership styles. Um, you know, I've got Kiki uh, Escobar, who, who is part of that leadership. Uh, uh, Sarah Hindegas, Maddie Simon, Abby Dorr, uh, and Grace Mesmer. Speaking of Abby, she hit 11 homers last year to lead your team there. What 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 do you hope to see from her? What she does she does she bring to the table? Yeah, you know she's she's got the leadership behind the plate. She's got the experience behind the plate, not just in the Pac-12 but in the SEC as well. Coming from the University of Alabama, uh, she's got power. You know, at any point uh, she can change the game with one swing of the bat. You've got obviously you mentioned Messner hit 290 last year. Uh, and Grace has been there forever. You got he obviously the all freshman performer. How have you seen those developments? You got a veteran there, obviously, and then you got the youngsters because that was the thing. I remember last year we spoke. You had a lot of youngsters that were going to have to learn on the fly. <laughs> yes, uh, and they still they have a lot of great people that they can look up to yeah. and get information from, and uh, you know, kind of pick their brain. You know, with Grace, with Maddie Simon, you know, they've got the international experience. Uh, Eli Gottlieb. She's got the international experience with Team Israel. And so, you know, the people that Grace Messmer is learning from at the international level uh, is pretty cool. You know, Jen Salling and, uh, you know, Danielle Laurie and um, just a ton of people, ton of knowledge. Uh, Joey Lai. Uh, so that comes, you know, with Grace to our team, uh, which I'm really excited that the younger players get to pick her brain. She gets to use that knowledge as well as an athlete. Um, either at uh, third base or shortstop. Uh, Grace is, she's, you know, somebody that I can, I can put anywhere. I can put her at first base. I can put her at second base. And she's the kind of athlete is just like, put me anywhere you need me, coach, anything that's going to help the team. How do you feel about your defense going in? Uh, is there certain players that you feel there's got it locked down that's going to really be a big part of your defensive success? You know, they're still they're still trying to fight for starting okay. positions. You know, um, I always want to dangle that carrot in front of everybody uh, so they keep competing and fighting for a starting position because uh, you never know. You know, injuries do happen and I don't want to put somebody out there that doesn't know what they're doing. You know, they got to be able to go out there and without a beat, uh, be able to pick up the missing pieces. Um, you know, Kiki Escobar has got a fighting shot, you know, obviously being, you know, our starting second baseman, uh, Savannah Watley, you know, that, um, up the middle double play combination, they've got great range. They've got strong arms. Uh, they make these, uh, incredible plays, you know, during the fall games and during practice. And so I'm really excited about, uh, seeing them. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to Paige Dorr, uh, Abby's, uh, little sister, um, and seeing what she does out in the outfield uh, in center field. So um, there's 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 still some fighting going on for starting positions, which is what we need. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that fight. I'm glad you confirmed because I when I looked at your roster, I'm like, oh, the door. I wonder if there were the sisters, but I you know you don't want to <laughs> say it, and then you look like an idiot. So how are <laughs> how are they the same? How are they different type players? Well, one's a catcher, one's an outfielder. Um, you know, Abby's the power hitter. Uh, Paige is more of the uh, gap hitter. 
Um, they both hit from the left side. They kind of look the same. They've got the dark hair. Uh, so, <laughs> um, um, basically, you know, positions is what separates them. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah. you, met you mentioned Sarah, obviously, earlier, your pitcher. She returns. How has she looked this fall? And then you obviously have uh, Ellie coming back. You have Chloe back. You've added Logan Hewland, a transfer. Uh, just talk about yep. your pitching staff as a whole. Yeah, I'm really excited about this pitching staff. You know, you have someone like a Logan coming in with the experience that she has at the University of Texas, you know, working with Mike White, one of the um, premier men's fast pitch pitchers, uh, seeing what she does, you know, the experience that she has. I'm really excited for her. She throws hard. She's got a good changeup. I've tried picking her, can't pick her. So that's a good thing. Um, you know, uh, Sarah Hindigas. Uh, with the experience that she has of, you know, not just the College World Series and postseason experience, but being side to side with a Mariah Maison, you know, and having that mentality be able to rub off on her. Um, I'm really excited. She has been on a little bit of a pitch count. She should be full go, 100 percent released from the doctors uh, come come uh, starting practice uh, Thursday uh, of this week. And um, then Ellie Garcia, you know, she took on the bulk of uh, the season last year and she wanted the ball. She has that mentality of give me the ball. I want to win games. And she's got um, she's been working on her change up uh, this summer. And so in the fall. And so I'm excited to see what she does. We've, we're going to have we've have her for a full year now, which I'm really excited. Whereas she came in in January last year. Oh, wow. That's a great point. I forgot about that part of January yep. there. Do you feel that the players, obviously last year was a tough year, each play, you know, injuries, et cetera. But it, do you feel like maybe going through that will make this group stronger, especially the returners going through that this year? Because I can't imagine you're going to face anything this year uh, that that's going to phase this group. Yeah, you know, it makes, them, it makes them tougher. It lets them know that we can deal with anything, you know. And then those that normally wouldn't have had a shot um, or played a different, played more of a role player, um, they have that experience now of being our starter and playing against some of the co toughest competition uh, in the country. And so um, it definitely will bring them together and make them more mentally tougher. Let's talk about your non-conference schedule. You're going to open up in Tampa, Florida, uh, in a stack <laughs> tournament uh, with yeah. uh, USF hosting and uh, your friend Ken Erickson, who you obviously know very well from the time that you mm -hmm. softball. Florida is in that field, among others. Uh, just talk about your whole non-conference schedule as a whole is your philosophy this year. Yeah, I think we have a great non-conference schedule. Um, a lot of high RPI teams, a lot of teams that win postseason, UCF being one of them. Uh, we get to play Michigan a couple of times. You know, we get to play Florida. So I'm really Northwestern, um, Tennessee at the Mary Nutter. And so it's going to be a lot of challenging games. These guys, you know, are going to be, pre be prepared for when Pac-12 play starts. Yeah, you're part of that Mary Nutter tournament week three. Uh, and I mentioned the Tampa tournament. And correct me if I'm wrong, the last time you were in the Tampa Clearwater area was when you were at Eddie Seymour State. At least this is where I met you anyway. So I'm going to be a little biased, <laughs> selfish here. Was at the 2017 World Junior World Championships where you were the head coach of the U.S. Junior goal, uh, yes. medal winning team. And what I remember about that is during the gold medal ceremony, it started pouring rain. And so I never got to, to talk to you in person, but we agreed <laughs> we would do it via the phone down the road later on. Uh, do you still have flash? I wonder if you're going to have flashbacks to that. Cause that was a cool moment. I remember you were proud when we, I had you on that summer a little bit after that, that was a proud moment for you. I mean, you always have pride representing USA. I mean, your resume speaks for itself when right. it comes to that, but you, you were the head coach there leading the way. Yeah, that was my first, you know, head position for Team USA. And so, um, you know, I had some big shoes to fill in following Toriah Flowers. And so, um, you know, having Bubba Nichols and Sis Bates and Bailey Klingler and, you know, oh. people like that, Natalie Lugo, you know, um, I was really, really Catherine Sandercock. I mean, the, the names is just, I know, all-star team right there. Uh, they were really fun to work with and they represented the USA very well. And, you know, I kind of just, it was, it was an easy job for me. You know, um, I will have flashbacks when I get there. Um, I think I've been there a couple of times with uh, USA tryouts, um, right. but oh, competitively, right. competitively, yeah, it was 2017 um, as far as playing games. And so I'm really excited about 
going back there, um, giving a lot of crap to <laughs> Coach Erickson. So it's been a while since I've been able to give him a squeeze. So I'm looking forward to seeing him. And, you know, I, I continue even to this day to, to learn from that man and the knowledge that he brings to our sport. And so I'm excited to bring the players out there to face that kind of competition. Have you been to his facility there, that stadium that you're going to be playing in? You've been there before? I have been. Oh, I have been, yes. Great, incredible. It's a great facility. It's an incredible facility, yes. By the way, you picked a good year for you to be a head coach for the first time there at 17. That <laughs> roster was stacked. <laughs> it was, right? My I mean, job was easy. I was going to say, I gave you a lot of credit. Maybe I need a revision it uh, there. That's a pretty <laughs> – and you had a great staff that time too, right? You I had did. Trisha Ford yep. was on your staff. Trisha, Trisha Ford, uh, uh Kirk Walker, yep. uh, Christy Jarvis, um, Fox, you know, um, is her maiden name. Sure. Um, Natasha Watley. Um, at times I got to work with uh, Lori Harrigan uh, when Trisha Ford was not there. And so um, I was incredibly lucky and blessed. I would say so. That's a great group. And obviously the big news in the offseason is, uh, internationally at least, the Olympics will bring softball back in Los Angeles in 2028 yep. what did, what was your reaction when you heard that news officially uh as somebody who's obviously been a part of this process in so many different hats as a player as an as a coach uh you were there in tokyo what what was your reaction when you heard that news super excited super excited i mean it's just you know and and i think one of the things too is is the possibility you know if their teams qualify is having some of my athletes be a part of those olympic games maddie simon with puerto rico uh grace mesmer with team canada you know i um uh savannah watley and and you know lisi campbell a possibility of team mexico and so i'm really excited that they get an opportunity to be able to represent their countries and experience what the olympic games are about um, and then, of course, you know, Los Angeles, you know, being the hosted, that's like my backyard, you know, basically. And so um, I'm I, I'm thrilled. I'm over the moon, uh, excited for the women that get to represent Team USA. And I'm excited for the coaches that get to get to coach these young uh, women uh, to bring back the gold medal. You know, what better place to bring back the gold to the U.S. than in Los Angeles? You've said, you said last year, you were done coaching the international game, but it takes a lot of your personal time and it was just, it, you enjoyed it, but you know, it's time, you know, to get away, step away from it a little bit. Obviously you got your obvious responsibilities at Oregon state and all that. Does the fact that it's in LA, does that, do, do, can somebody talk <laughs> you into it here? Are you, is that door completely shut? I mean, down the road, what are, what are, what are we doing here? No, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I've You're got done. a two-year-old daughter that, okay. you know, I enjoy, you know, spending my time with going on camping trips and hiking. And I'd love to take her fishing and see how she likes that. You know, um, soon she'll start, you know, playing some sports or, or I don't know, musical instruments or dancing or whatever it might be that her take is. Uh, space camp, if that's, you know, the route that she wants to go. She really loves, you know, space and was an astronaut for, Halloween. And so that's kind of like where my life is leading right now. Um, you know, obviously my responsibilities for Oregon State and getting recruiting done, you know, it's time to pass the torch. You know, I think Heather Tarr is doing a phenomenal job with Team USA. And, you know, I think she she can bring the gold medal, help bring the gold medal back to the United States. That said, I feel like you're going to be there as a spectator. You're taking Brady to that Olympic softball. I mean, you can't get a chance. Yes. I mean, has there been, I'm trying to think, has there ever been a softball Olympics without you in some capacity? Like you have to be there. I feel like you have to be there in some capacity. Otherwise it doesn't count. There's a good chance. Yes. That I will be a spectator there. Okay. And you should be able to get tickets. Otherwise there's something wrong. <laughs> uh, I sure but, hope so. Now you mentioned though, LA is your backyard. So I am curious. So how do you think LA will host not just the Olympics, but specifically softball? How do you think, Will there be a softball only facility? I know in Tokyo, for example, it was had to be a softball, baseball a stadium, basically. It was part mm -hmm. of the deal. How do you think mm -hmm. LA will 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 handle uh softball Olympics? I don't know. That's uh that's interesting. I know the thought of, you know, Bill Barber. Um, I'm not sure if they can hold the capacity of you know what the Olympics brings. The, you know, it has been brought of uh one of the fields at Great Park in Irvine. Uh, you know, I have no idea. It'll it'll be fun to see what they do, what happens. Um, so I don't know. We'll see.
Do you have any? I think they'll do a phenomenal job, though. Do you have any advice if people re, like what? What's one thing or two things that you would advise them? Either from a hosting standpoint, it could be just maybe it's a player advice that hey, this is if you're you know this is the Olympic experience because you've experienced it all. So I'm curious, what advice would you give any particular group, whether it's the people running the event, whether it's the players participating or coaches coaching it in it? Um, you know, I think as far as the players, you know, to understand that, you know, the hard part is already over. You're already, you're there at the Olympics. Now it's time to just kind of kick it into, in autopilot and just play. You know, you've, you've worked so hard for so long that you already know what you're doing. You already know uh, how to play the game. It's just time to put it on autopilot. Um, you know, sometimes as athletes, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves and um, come to a point where we struggle to play. And, um, you know, the work has already been put in. So trust, trust the work, trust the process, love the process. And, you know, just kind of, you know, what we said in 2004, so what, you know, so, so what mentality, so what it's hot, you know, it's hot for the other team as well. Or so what, you know, we got stuck in traffic. The other team, you know, could be in traffic as well. And, you know, whatever it might be, um, you know, just having that so what mentality, um, you know, as far as coaching, it's just kind of take a step back and let them play, you know, let them do their thing that that, that, that the players, they're ready, they're, they're prepared, you've prepared them, um, you've given the best opportunity for them to be able to win and just kind of step back and, and kind of just let them go. Um, as far as, you know, the people who run it, you know, I've been a part of, of five different, you know, ones and they've all done it differently. And, you know, I've enjoyed all of them actually. Um, hopefully they can have the, uh, where the softball team stays, you know, pretty close to, uh, the facility. You know, I've been where, you know, the facility was a little bit of a drive and, you know, um, and then I've been where, uh, in, in Columbus, Georgia, where, you know, the drive wasn't very far at all. And so, um, the drive that's not very far at all is is the preferred method, <laughs> if they can do that. Especially in California. <laughs> yes, especially in California. <laughs> uh, the following Olympics in 2032 will be in Brisbane. Are you, do you believe, like many believe, that that's big because there's a good high probability softball will be in the Olympics now and back-to-back -back Olympics with LA and Brisbane because Brisbane, Australia is a huge uh, right. softball country, which you would know having participated in 2000. Right. Yeah. I think it's a great thing. Um, you know, it's huge for them to be back to back like that because then it gives players opportunities to play in multiple Olympics. Um, you know, I was very fortunate to be able to have all four of them kind of back to back. And so I didn't have to skip out, you know, or wait, um, and be past my prime, uh, during, uh, any of those Olympics. And so, um, I think this is, is exciting. It's phenomenal, uh, that the players get to do it back to back. Do you have a favorite one of all? I mean, I mean, you mentioned the 04, we're at the 20 year anniversary of that 04 team. Oh, uh, you don't need to say that. Don't, you don't need to say that. You just, just made me feel really old now. Listen, you were on the cover of sports illustrated. <laughs> like, come on. How many people can say yes. that? Yes. Oh my gosh. I cannot believe. Wow. Time flies. Um, you know, it has to be 2004, uh, probably because of how well we played, you know, and, you know, being under, you know, coach Candrea and seeing everything that he did as a coach and what he did for us as a team, um, was really, uh, pretty cool to see and to be a part of because literally no stone was unturned um, for our team. And it just is, is as a player, you, you can't thank that coach enough to do, to do that. Um, Cause it just, it shows that, that he not only cares as, as your coach, but he cares about you also as an individual, as, as a person. Bobby, it makes it funny better. Caitlin didn't like my question when I brought up the Olympics in uh, 28 <laughs> because it brought up memories of her in 08, and that's going to be 20 years of that anniversary for her <laughs> in 08. So, all right, I guess I do anniversaries. But listen, it's a, it's a good problem to have. Have, have you it thought, is. have you had a chance to reflect of what softball has provided you? I mean, you've gotten to go to Athens, Greece for that Olympics in 04, Beijing in 08, Tokyo, uh, uh, yep. Sydney, Australia. 
You were part of the original one, which you were part of the documentary that uh, they had on Peacock leading up to the Tokyo Olympics. They did a documentary on the first softball Olympics there with, I mean, Dot Richardson, of course, took up a lot of airtime because she talked. But you you got it. You chimed in on there. Uh, but obviously, <laughs> you've, been, you've been all over the world because of softball. Have you, have you, yeah. has that hit you? Oh, all the time. All the time. You know, even just sitting down with my mom, you know, um, or even my dad uh, before he passed a couple of years ago. You know, and, and talking about walking on the Great Wall of China and seeing the Redeemer in Brazil and the Coliseum in Italy and holding koala bears and being by kangaroos in Australia and being able to to see uh, uh, Mount Fuji uh, or Fiji in, um, I'm probably saying it wrong, in Japan, you know, um, being on the 34th floor of a building in Japan when an earthquake hit, you know, just all these different experiences that I've had, uh, I'm very blessed. I'm very lucky, um, not just to travel all around the world, but all around in the U.S. I think there are three states that I haven't been to um, out of the 50. So, yeah, wow. I'm very lucky. Which three states have you not been to? Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire. Yeah, that's tough to, yeah, no real softball reasons to go there uh, at, at times. There. Yeah, it's <laughs> tough to play games anyway. Do you remember your first ever international trip with Team USA? Yeah, I was in St. John's, Newfoundland. Oh, wow. I was not yeah. expecting that answer. What was, What do you remember <laughs> about that? Because you, you've, you're coaching players that, in some cases, probably have never traveled, never taken a flight uh, outside of their region, or at least not traveled out of the country, even maybe not out of the state. Yeah. What What was that experience like when you first made that trip? Yeah, um, you know, I was really excited because I got to work with people like Ralph Raymond and uh, Ralph Weekly and Mike Kendrea and Margie Wright was there. Um, you know, my my idol growing up was Lisa Fernandez and now all of a sudden she's my teammate, you know, and, you know, Dot Richardson, they took me under their wing, you know, and showed me what USA Softball is, is all about. And I remember, you know, kind of the dorms that we lived in and you know, Dottie and, and Lisa and I watching movies every night. And it just was really freaking cool, you know, to be around people like them, Lori Harrigan, um, Michelle Smith, Karen Sancelli. I mean, it just was pretty freaking cool. Newman, right, too? Like, I mean, you all are, you're, and you're all still involved in the game in, in a lot of capacities, <laughs> which is kind of the wild thing uh on that so it's just uh it's pretty remarkable yeah you need to be in the olympics in some capacity in la that that's just it's got to happen you can't <laughs> you can't miss i'm sorry like you don't have to coach you don't have to play but you need to be around because I'd, it'd be weird i will to have a... i will do everything i can to get tickets Ooh. so hey think of hey, hey think of me right when you think of that i mean obviously family okay. comes first <laughs> um let's talk about obviously you mentioned we talked earlier about your non-conference schedule Obviously, it's no secret what's going on in conference realignment and everything's going on. No different in Oregon State. I'm curious, how is all of this changes affecting potentially your future non-conference, pre-conference scheduling? For those that do not know, uh, it looks, you're going to be going to the West Coast Conference for at least a couple of years uh, with most of the Oregon State sports. We're not going to get into the whole details of all of that. I'm more curious about from your program and your standpoint, how that affects your scheduling moving forward. Yeah, you know, um, funny, I called Brian and Tarai and I was like, oh, looks like you guys are stuck with me for two years. Uh <laughs> <laughs> so but you know it's just what we'll have to do is just schedule you know um or request to have teams with high rpis on uh, teams ranked in the top 25 to help um you know pull up our rpi so i mean that's just you know going to be a little a little different change i mean we play a lot of teams with high rpis but we're just going to have to you know play with teams in the top top 25 rpi this time is there comfort from the fact that you're going to be in a conference that's very geography friendly? Yes. Yes. And that's one thing that I can sell to the, to the, uh, you know, student athletes that we are recruiting. It's like your parents are going to be able to watch you play very often because it's most of the schools we're the only out of state, out of California school, uh, I believe in that conference now. And so uh, they're going to be able to watch because we're going to be staying on the West coast most of the time for our tournaments and then, um, obviously, our conference, we will um, be out on uh, the West Coast. 
is it discussed at all with your players this year about how it's the last year of the Pac-12? It's gonna it's gonna be unique from that standpoint, and that hey, let's let's make you know we got a chance that this is a year that a lot of people are gonna remember. Why not? Hey, yeah. make you know make be a part of it. History, make some history, yeah. right? Yeah, we've had we've gone to a, a little bit of the conversations. We'll go into more depth about it now that we know what conference we're going to be in. Um, you know, uh, we can control what we can control, and right now we have to look and 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 concentrate on this year. We can't look into the uh, into the future. We can't look at the past. We have to be in the present, and um, you know, have that mentality of make this the best. Um, if this is the last of the Pac-12, I don't think it will be. I think we're going to rebuild within the next two years. I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of schools that have kind of that oh crap moment. What did we do? Um, this travel is killing our student athletes. So I think we will rebuild, and the Pac-12 will will be back. Um, but for these next for the two years that we're in the WCC, you know, just control what we can control, and that's that's the conference we'll be in. Um, we'll give it our best shot. Uh, and play play our very best uh, every time we suit up, and you know that's that's all that we can do. You've been a head coach a long time in the Pac-12. You've got a lot of friends in the conference, coaches that you know very well, and you'll still be friends. It's not like I mean, this is you know, it's, it's it is yeah. what it is. That being said, when you have coaches meetings or when you see them this year on the weekend, is it do you take a moment and and just take you know, for example, Lisa Fernandez, you mentioned your teammate. You know, this could be the last time you play them, at least as a conference foe. Who knows down the road, like you said, this about this year. But, you know, no take it for granted, in other words. I mean, that, that's, you know, part of that, that you'll yeah. see some, you, people you know very well that you've enjoyed competing against. Yeah, you know, uh, I will definitely miss, you know, seeing Kelly in a way and, and Lisa and Kirko. You know, um, I've known those guys for for a lot of years now. Um, Lisa and Kelly in a way were our uh our host when UCLA was recruiting us. And so I've known them for a very long time. And, you know, um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's disappointing. It's the, the people at the top are supposed to be the smartest people in the room. And how can they not figure out just to separate football and leave the Olympic sports in their conference? I have no idea what is so difficult about that. Um, Maybe that's above my pay grade. I don't know. But well, you, you um, sound like Chip. Like, you sound like Chip Kelly. That's what Chip Kelly said. The UCLA. Well, it's football. the most logical. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's the most logical thing out there. Um, but who knows? You know. Um, you know, I'll be sad to see Amy Hoko. I've known her. I've played against her in college when she was at Utah, and I was at Fresno State. Um, you know, so it it it. I'm gonna. It's gonna be a lot of people that you know. I'm gonna uh, be sad um, saying goodbye to um, as far as the Pac-12. Um, I'm sure I'll see him out on the recruiting trail and it's just won't be the same. You know, I've learned a lot from, you know, Kelly in a way and Kirk and, you know, even working with Heather Tarr, you know, I've learned a lot from, from her with, you know, working with team USA and all that and, and watching how she does things at uh, university of Washington. And it's just, it's uh it's yeah, it's a sad day. No, no doubt. We'll go a little lighter mode. You mentioned Kelly, and I remember last time, last year. You, for those that do not know, you've been on. We've talked about this is at length. You're a diehard Patriots fan. Uh, that's why you wear you always wear hoodies because you're a Belichick fan. But you're also a Tom Brady <laughs> fan. Daughter mentioned Brady, named after. Safe to say, Tom Brady. <laughs> you told me you were trying to see when you talk to Kelly, if, Hey, you know, Maya Brady, can you, can you get your uncle to come to a game so I can meet your uncle? Did, did that ever, <laughs> has that, has that happened? Are we still working no. on this? What? Oh, come on. No, that never happened. But I do remember Tommy at our games when I played at Fresno state and his sister was, you know, obviously yeah. the all American pitcher there. Uh, he just, you know, obviously wasn't the Tommy of today. Um, but yeah, you know, um, I'm going to start, you know, maybe cut my sleeves. You know, I don't know if, if my admin would be quite happy with that. It's, you know, not quite the professional look. Um, but I do love Bill Belichick. Um, I think he's a phenomenal coach. Obviously, the the greatest of all time, I think. Um, I know they've struggled you know, the last couple of years. But, I mean, they were on top for 23 years. Like, at some point, like, they're going to dip down. So, you just, you know, those those loyal fans will stick through the, the ups and, the, and especially the downs. And so... You know, it is what it is, and hopefully we can get some good draft picks and, and some good uh, trades and, yeah, get back on top again. 
You've got a high draft pick. Number three, I believe, is your draft pick. Do you want to, I'm assuming, quarterback? You want a quarterback? I think that's the route they're going to have to go. Okay. Quarterback. We still got Oregon, but we got to set this up. You got to meet Tom Brady. Like, how is this possible? Because I mean, you, you've met a lot of great at, uh, famous athletes <laughs> over the years. Like, I remember you've met Kobe Bryant during the Olympics. I mean, you've met a lot of Olympics. The fact you have yeah. not met Tom Brady as a diehard Patriot fan, it blows my <laughs> mind away. That needs to happen. I don't know how, but it needs I know, to I know, but you know what? I've met his sister. I got to play with his sister. And so, you know, for me, that's good enough. And, you know, I, I love Maureen. She is the competitor that, you know, just like Tommy, you know, love to win, love to compete. I love chatting with her. I love being able to see her. I hope she can come up here when they have their, uh, their games up here, but um, yeah, I wish you could have seen Maureen play. She was feisty. She was competitive. She um, was, she just was a firecracker. Yeah. Speak for those that don't know. That's a great point. They don't realize, you know, everybody focuses, uh, you know, Tom Brady, but you know, that family is tremendous athletes and the sister being one oh, of yeah. them. Just talk about her and her playing career. Yeah. I mean, she just is, you know, I believe her her junior year, she led the country in wins. And she just, yeah, I remember hitting off of her in practice and she was working on her curveballs and she hit me three times in a row and there was no apology. There was no, like, it was just like, get your butt in the box and let's go. Okay, I hit you. It's part of the game. And so, um, you know, you want to play with people who are like that. She would strike somebody out and yell yell at them to go sit down, or she would catch a line drive, hit back at her and say, see ya, you know, and you know, that as an, a player that fires you up, you want to play with people like that. You want to go, you want to win um, for people like that. And so I just, I wish I had more than just two years with her. That's, that's high compliment. High praise there. That was a great combo there. At, uh, those Fresno state teams there uh that's pretty good i like that's good story good. thanks for sharing that <laughs> we need all we need also to get your patriots to be relevant again because uh, usually you and i have had good fun back and forth dolphin patriots smack talk but it's no fun if like your team's not good and i can't talk because the dolphins have done what they've done for the last 35 well, years as a fan which is struggle in december and january so i mean we gotta we gotta we gotta get this back going like it yeah was. well you know the patriots aren't going to be as ir irrelevant as long as the dolphins have been so you know wow. don't worry the next couple of years you watch out you watch out hey kicking me down come on now uh fair no it's all fair i i can't i have no i have no resp i have no retaliation to like, that That's come on thing. they're playing at home they're playing the bills i mean we always lose three to the bills receptions, three turnovers in like the first half yeah. and they what the heck we always lose to, I, as a kid, I remember the Dolphins, the last time they hosted the AFC title game was in 92, they lost to the Bills. Like, we the Bills, it's just, you know, it was Thurman Thomas, Jim Kelly back then, and now it's Josh Allen that owns the Dolphins. It's just is what it is. And I've, ac <laughs> I've accepted, but thank you for the reminder uh, on that. Uh, that's why you need a quarterback, because we both got to deal with Josh Allen, both our teams. Yeah, we can, we yeah. have that in common. It's not just my yeah. problem, it's your problem, too. For sure. Uh, um couple more things before I let you go. There were some changes in the rules, illegal pitches, more modified, uh, pitch clocks, 20 seconds. Your reaction to that, and I know there's been a lot of coaches that like the international rules and, and like the college game as far as the, you know, the legal pitch and things like that, to maybe speed up the game to use some of the uh, international rules. What's your reaction to that? Um. I don't know yet about the 20 second clock. I know that we came later in my career, um, you know, with the international game. It's just the inconsistencies when it comes to the pitch clock and when people actually start it, you know, they could start it a little bit sooner for the visiting team versus they do for their home team. I mean, who knows? Like, are you going to have somebody who is not biased and be at that pitch clock starting yeah. with? I, who knows? I don't know um you know is it the umpire at third base is he the one who's going to be starting it and stopping it and starting it and you know or is it somebody up in the press box I, I don't know enough about it just yet um it kind of seems like we're kind of on our own with it um as far as like the equipment we have this phenomenal scoreboard um 
So can we put it up on the scoreboards? So people can, you know, see it. Like I, I don't know. There's just kind of a lot of open, open about it. Um, I mean, if they want to speed up the game, if they want to change, then they need to get rid of people leaving the box. That's what takes up most of the time. So, like the international game, use that where you have to keep one foot in the box. There are exceptions of, you know, hit by pitch or slapper, you know, running out of the box. You got to come right back. You know, you swing and miss. Those are exceptions um, to the rule. But, like, just keep one foot in the box. You know, baseball does that. So, why can't we do that? Um, I think, again, I think that's where most of our time goes to. No, that's a great perspective of talking about, you know, the you know, that takes as much time. I think Tim Walton we've had on the show has brought up that too about having, you know, foot in the box for the hitters that they could help out like we focus so much on the pitchers and how long they take, but the hitters could do that part their part too to speed up the game. That I've never heard it explained that way like you just did. Yeah, it just it, it makes a big difference, you know, seeing the college game versus the international game. It really does. That's valid uh you went through the pac-12 you had a you know the, you, last year you saw the pac-12 tournament for the first time mm -hmm. uh, they're gonna have it this year at stanford uh did you do you like it you know because i remember you were sort of you know you had not had it before there was some hesitance it benefited a team like utah for example they won the pac-12 right. tournament and got to host did you like it in I moving did. forward do you like conference tournaments yes i did very much like it um because look at what it did with Utah. And that was the whole purpose of it was uh, to be able to do that because that moved them up uh, in the RPI. Uh, and so, yes, it's definitely uh, beneficial. When you go to Tampa, first of all, a lighter question. Do you, are you going to wear the hoodie in eight, if it's 80 degrees? Like, you're not wearing a hoodie in 80 degrees, are no, you? Not you're not not degrees. So you're not Bella. No. So you're not, you're not going that far like Bill does. Because Bill no. still wears that. No. When he's in Miami, which is kind of nuts. All right, good. I want to get that out of the way. But in all seriousness, yeah. when you get to Tampa, what are a couple questions or keys that you're looking forward to finding out about this team that you only find out playing other competition? Yeah, you know, how are they going to perform under pressure? You know, we're playing some really, really good teams. And um, we're going to be challenged mentally. You know, Coach Erickson is really good at picking pitchers. You know, how are they going to? How are the pitchers going to um, be when their changeup gets picked? You know, how are they going to handle that? What is the adjustment that they're going to make? What are the adjustments at the plate that these hitters are going to make when they're facing, you know, all American pitchers? And so um, I, it, this field is going to be different. The travel is going to be different. It's harder to go from the West coast to the East coast as far as the time time zones. Um, the field is a little bit different. It's a little bit softer. So it can handle the rain a little bit better. Um, so, you know, it's going to be interesting to see, uh, how these guys react to it. And I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing your team play and seeing your team on the East coast and just seeing them in general, this upcoming season, uh, coach always, uh, appreciate you taking the time from your busy schedule and your honesty and candor. You always offer so many great thoughts about the game of softball <laughs> and, uh, I'm glad to enjoy it, even though you do take pot shots at the dolphins, but that's fine. I've accepted that <laughs> as part of our friendship. That's part of the agreement. I get it. Uh, Hey, oh, be safe, uh, you know, and with the family and everything and, uh, hope to, uh, cross Thank paths you. during the season. It's always great chatting with you. Thanks for having me on. And I look forward to seeing you.